Hey, what's up creators? Today, we're going to be showing you how we can get our weapon to fire with a line trace. This is going to be a line that's calculated from the center of the screen and do where the bullet is going to land. And with this, we can apply damage, we can apply collision, but most importantly, this is all of our functionality for our weapon in terms of actually making it hit and do stuff. Let's go ahead and hop into Unreal Engine 5 and get started. Okay, so the very first thing that we actually need to be setting up in here is we need to set up the line trace that goes from the center of the screen to wherever the crosshair of the center of the screen is pointing. And we're gonna be doing that so it links up with our weapon so when we fire, it does that line trace at the exact same time. To do this, we're gonna hop over to our first person character and we're gonna be creating a firing function. So by a firing function, I just mean a piece of code that we can reuse every single time the gun is shot. To add this function, open up that first person character. Again, that's under content, FPS assets, first person BP and blueprints. Then what we're gonna be doing is creating a function. And we're gonna be giving this the name fire weapon. Once we've done this, this is where we can start making all of the magic happen. This is where we're going to be writing our blueprints that happens every single time we shoot our weapon. So what we're going to be doing is we are going to be using something called a line trace. You might be familiar with this with different names in different game engines, such as a raycast or a ray trace. It can be called many things, but in Unreal Engine, this is called a line trace. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be searching for a little function called line trace by channel. So you'll find it here under collision and line trace by channel. Now with this line trace, we need to determine a start point and an end point. The start point is of course going to be the center of the camera. So where the player is looking. And then the end point for this is going to be that location. Then we're going to figure out which way they're facing forwards and then multiply this by a number to get a distance that the bullet can travel. And then that's where the bullet is going to hit. We'll go through this in just a moment. So first and foremost, let's go ahead and get a reference to the first person character in the components panel in the top left hand corner. We're going to get a reference to this by simply dragging and dropping it into our event graph. So what we're going to do with this first person camera is we're going to drag out from this and we are going to get the world location. This is going to tell us where that camera is. And subsequently, that is our start point for the line trace. That's the center of the camera. Then what we're going to be doing now is where it gets a little bit more complex is our end point. We're going to be taking that location and adding a few things to it. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to be going in and we're going to be getting the rotation of this so we can figure out which direction it's facing. So we're going to drag out from that first person character and get world rotation. And then with this, we're going to take this and we're going to convert this to a forward direction. So we're going to take out from there, get forward vector. And then with this, this is going to tell us this is the way that this is kind of facing. And then we need to multiply this by a float to face that direction, then the distance, and we can add that in together. So I'm gonna do a little bit of blueprint here and I'll explain it once it's done. So what we're gonna do from here is we're gonna be using the multiply maths function. And then we're going to convert this to a float because we just want a number and we're going to be multiplying this by 1500. So here now we've got the camera, we've got the rotation, the direction it's facing. We're multiplying this by 1500. And then what we're going to do is we're going to be using the add function to add our world location, which is our start to the distance. And that is how we calculate that endpoint there. And we can test this in just a second, but in terms of our ray trace, this is all we need to do. So in here, trace channel, make sure this is visibility so we can see it. Draw debug type, turn this on to persistent just for now. 
and that's it. Our line trace is ready to go. Testing this is really straightforward. What we're going to do is just create a temporary input. When we press F, it's going to fire a single one of these line traces. What we're going to be doing towards the end of this video is in that animation notifier that we showed you earlier on, we're going to be adding that in so it does a line trace every time it plays the sound and every time it plays the particle effect. Really straightforward. So let's go ahead and test this for now. We haven't got any kind of key binding to make our line trace work or so we can see it. So I'm going to hop over to my event graph and what I'm going to do inside here is I'm going to add a just simple little input F on the keyboard. So just type in keyboard event and it's an F here. And when we do this, we are just going to fire that weapon. So it's different to our firing, but I just want to make sure that our line trace works. I'm going to press compile and I'm going to press play. Every time I press my F key now, we can see we're getting these little lines. These are our line traces. And you can see it always hits perfectly in the center of the screen, which is exactly what we want it to do. Just before we implement this into our firing system, we want to get rid of those really ugly lines that we've got. So we're going to turn those off and then we're going to delete this temporary input we've created and put this into that animation notifier. Okay, now that we have got our weapon and our line trace working, let's go ahead and turn that line trace off so we can't see it. And then we're going to be implementing it into our animation blueprint as a notify. So what I want you to do is open up your first person character again for me. And we're going to open up our fire weapon function on the left hand side. Inside of here, what we're going to do is we're just going to go to our trace channel and our draw debug type. And for our draw debug type, we are just going to make sure this is set to none. If we go ahead and hit compile now and we hit play, press F, we can see we can no longer see that line trace, but it is happening. With that being said, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to implement this into our animation blueprint. So when we play that firing animation, it's also going to do the line trace that we did. So what we need to do inside of here is we actually need to add a notify on this track, which is calling that fire weapon function that we created earlier on. To do this, we're going to add a new notify track and we're going to give this a name code. Then what we're going to do on here is we are going to right click and add a new code notify. So under code, add notify and we're going to add a new notify with the name line trace. And wherever this is going to happen, we can attach some blueprints to that because it's just blank. It's empty. So to attach the code to this, we're going to be doing that in our event graph for our arms underscore and in BP. Again, to find this arms underscore and in BP, then inside of here in our event graph at the top, this is where we can go in and get that function and call it. So we need to get the notify to start with. For us, that is going to be line trace. And if we search for line trace by name, we get event anim notify underscore line trace. This is a trigger for whenever that line trace notify is called. So we're going to use this. Then what we're going to do is we are going to cast to our first person character. And as our first person character, we are going to do the fire weapon function with our line trace functionality in there. And our object wildcard, we're going to set this to get player character. Then we're going to go ahead and press compile. Now, just temporarily, what we're going to do is set that draw debug to persistent, press compile and minimize this just so we can see our line trace is working here. And you can see every time I shoot there, it is doing that line trace. If you want to, you can go back in there and you can turn that off just like I showed you by setting that draw debug type back to none. The next step then is how we can actually apply physics when an object gets hit by this line trace and also how we can apply damage for later on when we set up AI. Let's hop back in and show you how we can do that. Again, it's all just really simple blueprints. 
Okay, now that we've got all of the information out of our line trace by channel, we can actually show you how we can take our important thing, which is our out hit component and out hit location and actually apply physics so we can fire and make things move from here. To do this, we're going to take our out hit component and our out hit location. We are going to add impulse at location. And with this, you can see it requires a component. So I can take my out hit component and add impulse at location with this. It's asking for a location, which we can set to our out hit location because we've got this here already. This is just part of the data that comes from the line trace. And then we've got the impulse. We can set this to something like 500 by 500. And this is it. This is all we need to apply physics. Now, in the level itself, we need to make a few changes, such as with the boxes or any object that we want to actually move with physics, we need to select these and make sure these are all set to simulate physics in the details panel in the right hand side. So select the object, whether that be a bottle, baseball bats, absolutely anything, select it and set simulate physics to true. Then override our mass and set this to a low number, like 10 kilograms. And anything else from there, you don't really need to do. All we need to do now is just press play, jump in, and we can see, we can start shooting those cubes. If they're a little bit too heavy, then just reduce that mass even further. But other than that, that is pretty much everything that we need to do for our collision. The next thing that we're going to do is one simple little feature, which is going to be apply damage, which is going to allow us to apply damage to another actor. Now, we're not going to be setting this up, but I just do want to put it here just so we have the foundation of being able to hit AI or damage any kind of thing later on. So out hit actor is our damaged actor. The base damage, that is just the damage amount. We can set this to 10 or just about anything. So what we have now is we have collision and physics, and we also have damage being dealt. We'll show you once we get to AI, how you can actually take that damage, reduce it and kill it if we need to. But for now, this is all of our functionality. Okay, at this point, we have our gun and we have our line trace, we have physics working, we have damage which we can apply, which we can use later on. Everything is looking great. With that being said, that is the end of this video. Again, if you want to see more of this, be sure to subscribe to the channel and head over to the next video in this course. If you'd like a helping hand with this, be sure to check out our Discord server with over 5,000 like-minded developers just like yourselves. Also, if you'd like to support more high quality content just like this, be sure to go ahead and check out our Patreon and unlock exclusive perks such as early access to our videos, live mentoring, and easy to use game templates. With that being said, I hope you have enjoyed it. As always, stay awesome, keep creating. Virtus, signing out.